we always want to hear or, or get an idea of what to expect in the future and based off of what was, what's happening now. And I could not think of a better person than our next speaker, Faith Popcorn, who has been a trend forecaster uh, for many, many years and has been able to identify amazing trends that have actually happened. Um, she's got a, a percentile accuracy percentile rate up in the 90 percentile rate. It's, it's, fat, it's amazing. So I haven't, don't have enough to, to really say, so I won't say anything. You know, I'll just let her talk. So please, welcome, Faith Popcorn. <laughs> Thanks so much. Can you get that light down a teeny bit? Oh, you don't have control on the lights, right? Do you have control of anything? No. <laughs> when does the future start? <laughs> when does the future start? No. Now. When does the future start? No. When is the future? No. That's exactly right. And we go out there and, you know, people say to us, big companies, big companies, say, you know, you're too much about the future. I say, you know, that was like three minutes ago. <laughs> so I got a lot of questions. First of all, I want to tell you that I am going to take questions. I asked and I received. I think questions are the best part of my learning. Um, I get to know what you're thinking about. I try to answer you, you know, in, in, in the best way that I can. I'm going to tell you how we figure out the future. It's a big martini and a crystal ball in a basement. <laughs> That's what people think, but I mean, the martini part's true. So um, last, yesterday, last night, I came in. It was such a beautiful presence here. Really, I really thank you. I, every now and then, I have to connect with somebody, some real people. And this is like my infusion. Um, they asked me about my name, you know, I mean, I guess I did this to myself, so I need to tell the story. And I, I, I'm going to tell, is that all right, you want, about the name thing? So that can get off the plate, the name thing. I've had my name since I'm 21. So that was a couple years ago. So um, it was just about the time when I started my business. And it was just about, you know, 70, 74 I started in my studio apartment on my American Express card. And there I was, and guess who called me? I mean, my mother called me every single day, but she said, when are you moving home? Your room is exactly as you left it. My, you don't think I'm gonna go back to that. So um, there I was, and Fortune Magazine called. And Fortune Magazine, I, I said, wow, too. I go, wow, you sure you have the right number? So they came up. Uh, two guys with pencils. That's how long ago it was. They said, you know, Faith, we've been like watching you. I go, wow. Because I had like a lot of things. I had no clients, but I had a lot of ideas about what I thought was going to happen. You know, so I had all these ideas about the future <clears throat> written down. And they said, you know, we were wondering this one thing about you. And I said, what is it? it said, your name. I said, you came up here <clears throat> and made me do all this homework about the future, and you just want to know about my name? And they said, yeah, well, why else would we be here? So I said, well, I said, I don't know what I was smoking or drinking that morning. It was the 70s. <laughs> I said, well, um, my great-great-grandfather, our family name was Corne. He said, it was in Italy, the Corne family. So lousy research, because I'm 100% Jewish, so. Anyway, <clears throat> I said, the corn, you know, the cornies, um, my great-great-grandfather was so old. He was so old that in the village they used to call him Papa. So he came through immigration, and they said, sir, what is your name? And he said, my name is Papa Corne. I said, so I shortened it to Popcorn, and that's how I got my name. Now, if you Google this, you will see this story. So, you know, and I have a bridge in Brooklyn, if you leave that one anyway. But no, there was a true story about Fortune magazine. They didn't come back too many times after that, so. Anyway, I want to talk to you about one. The thing I like to leave behind is how to see the future, because I promise you that when you walk out of here, you will be able to see it too. You may not like it, but you're going to be. A lot of people can see the future, but they don't want to see the future, because it's like a little bit scary to see the future. We've been like projecting out 10 and 20 years for the last, you know, 30, 40 years. So there's a responsibility when you see it, because if you see it, you might have to do something about it. Anyway, 
this talk, well, I wanted to introduce you to Linda Palio. She dragged me, I go, Lojas, do I have to go there? She said, you really have to come here. And as soon as, she's our chief consciousness officer. Now, I think that we are the only company in the world. Does Coke have a chief consciousness officer? <laughs> it has, they're a big pain in the butt. Don't have it. They walk around and say, are you being conscious about this? Are you thinking consciously? Is this a balanced approach to what you're, that's what a chief consciousness officer does when she's not taking you to Colorado. Anyway, so we worked on this uh, talk together. So if you don't like it, it's her fault. And uh, if you do, I came up with every little idea. Now, anyway, it's called The Future of Me, We, and You. And mainly I want this talk to really be about you because that's what, why I'm here. And I want to just say that our practice, and I think we're the only ones that do this, is called applied futurism. So it's very easy to say what's going to happen, but it's very hard to get somebody to do something about it. So the application is how you turn the boat through what you see. And some of these boats, we work with mainly Fortune 500, and we're trying to like get them to move. Believe it or not, the Titanic would have missed the iceberg. Does anybody know this trivia? Eight degrees. So the future really, survival is really a lot of times about eight degrees. It's just this teeny little move this way. So that's applied futurism, getting the big boats, and that's what I've dedicated my life to, bringing myself and others into their best future. We sign everything, all our letters, everything, best future. So it's just getting them to move eight degrees. So what we do in our practice is we, um, we do you know, positioning, we do innovation, we try to bring the truth, this kind of thing. And we also do a lot of internal work, you know, trying to get the people on the inside to really move a little eight degrees so they start to change the way that they're talking to people, the way they're looking at products, the way they're talking about the environment and the consumer. We've written a lot of books. And let me tell you something about books. Don't do it. Oh, it's so horrible. My God, I haven't written one in 10 years. I can't bear it because you end up, you know, I'm a kind of person, we also have this talent bank of 10,000 people. That's more my thing, you know, talky, talky, get opinions, figure out what's going on. But books is about um, kind of like putting together everything you know and then projecting out. But the reason we write books is because we want to put our stake in the ground and say, we said this in 74, we said this in 78, we said this in 82, 88, in 81 we said cocooning. We said people were going to start to stay home. And out of that we, we predicted a great, great many things. So cocoon is not only about your home, but it's about the car you drive in, the minivan, the four-wheel drive. Um, we told Coke to bottle water. We told Pepsi to stop bottling water. So you see the future changes, you know. You know, 20 years ago when people were looking for pure clean water, we talked about bottling water. When people were looking for a pure clean planet, we said we had to unbottle water. And well, water is actually the next green, by the way, is blue. I mean, water is going to be the big, we can talk about that in the question and answer. And we also told McDonald's that the smoking police were coming because we start to track the language, the way they were, people were talking about, a lot of it's you know, linguistic analysis, how people were talking about fat. And they were talking about fat exactly the same way they were talking about cigarettes. We said fat tax is coming, sugar tax is coming. 15 years ago, we talked about that. So the thing about the future, predicting the future, is I said it's not that hard to predict, but it's really hard to get somebody to do something about. It. You know, LA Times or one of them um, looked back on our predictions, and I just like to put that stake in the ground. And I'm glad I didn't know they were doing that because I probably wouldn't have been sleeping much. And they found us to be 90 percent. I say 95. 10 percent hasn't happened yet. That would bring us to 105. <laughs> um, brailing the culture. I, I, incur I love all my magazines in my room. I'm a magazine addict. <clears throat> and um, you know, I have like big stacks. And I like very old technology with magazines. I like that. So what we do, we call it like close your eyes and braille the culture. You feel the culture. The little exercise you did here before about being here now is like feeling the culture. So we're reading like up to, I don't know, four or 500 magazines, uh, newspapers, periodicals, blogs, beeps, tweets, bangs, booms, whatever's coming in. And we're trying to pattern it or make some kind of sense out of it. But you know, if you're really good at this kind of work, your brain kind of does that for you. 
It's really nothing you have to learn. You all of a sudden have a, it's called an insight. And an insight really is about putting this stuff together. We also have 10,000 people in our talent bank, and those are, you know, we have a global talent bank of the most delicious, I mean, Deepak is just the beginning of it. We have every bioengineer, biotechnologist, every massage person, if you need a good person anywhere in the world, and all kinds of people that are really bringing the future actually, you know, to our attention and talking about what they're passionate about. If anybody here wants to be a member of our talent bank, all you have to do is um, you know, come to our website, faithpopcorn.com, and Lisa Parrish is our director of Talent Bank, and join our Talent Bank, and we'll just start talking to you, and you'll start talking to us. So we're talking and talking and talking in various ways to 10,000 people, more now probably. And then we drop our little uh, DNA all over the planet and say, you know, we have people in Tokyo and people in Malaysia and people in everywhere, every corner. And they, you know, they... They tell us stuff that may seem meaningless at, at, at the moment, but kind of as you start to think about it, it starts to get more fascinating. For instance, in Tokyo, like on, in a little subway station, our little Tokyo, a little Tokyo person is really little, writes to us and says, there's this uh, store in the subway station, and you can buy T-shirts and candy bars and stuff, but the thing about the store is when you finish, like when you buy it, they don't order it again. They order something else, which makes people crazy. So you need to buy it, buy it, buy it, because you'll never see it again. It's called like a short line. Very hard for big companies to do. Very effective in, in terms of making people have desire. You always want the thing. It's the sad part about human nature. Look at how we're all of a sudden like hugging our planet. You know, You always want the thing that's going away. And in this little store in the corner of Tokyo, you know, you'll see, you see, you see that, you know, kind of in, in black and white. This is the thing we live by. It's called our trend bank. <clears throat> I mean, it's long, it's messy, it's correct. It, if you understand it, and it's not really, you know, probably, you know, people talk about like, you know, trying to, we try to capture our trends like in a word, like cocooning, 99 lives, things that intuitively you can figure out, SOS, Save Our Society, been there for 25 years, icon toppling, that the big pillars of society would crash and tumble 30 years, you know, we saw, you know, we see this coming, and then we start to track, see it, see it, it's like having like more definite outlines, see it, it's coming, see? See, and hopefully we get you to see it before like it crashes, you know, right into your head. Anyway, um, I'm going to talk about today um, maybe some anchoring and some cashing out. Clanning is about hanging together with like types, you know. Um, I was going to say all these people and companies that are trying to get different cultures to merge and meld. Um, ethnicities to try to come together really could save their time because we're real clanners and we actually clan around who we are and what we're interested in, more what we're interested in. So the way we're, you know, HR people look at it, I don't think that's the right way to look at it, but that's another, we could talk about that in Q&A.